and make things right. Be glorified. I remember seeing a video on YouTube of Creflo Dollar just running around the podium and in the church, money flying everywhere, just dancing on it. The only time that that can happen in the church, God's holy church, where we come to worship Him and to reverence Him, the only time that we can do something like that is when God is not enough for us. When God is not enough, then we need entertainment. When God is not enough, then we begin to seek the blessings that He gives rather than the blesser. When God is not enough, we have to do things to keep people coming back for more, right? We keep them carnal. We don't tell them about how they can be holy. We don't mention sin. We don't mention repentance. What God does for us as believers in Christ, when He opens up our eyes, He says that He will lead us into all truth. That's what the Holy Spirit does for us. And every once in a while, we're able to see their tails. God shows us a little piece of that, that tail. Uh, sometimes the fangs start to come out. We run around the front and we do all kinds of little ballet stuff. Woo! Praise you, Lord! Woo! Woo! And then I say, you got to get some money. And if we're in our word, then God will give us a revelation that this is not of him. Because we can line it up with scripture. That's where we go to. This is our ultimate authority. And the reason why this is so deceptive, there's such a strong delusion today, is because people don't read their Bibles. They're just collecting dust. Every time I look around, they're talking about money. Well, as soon as you get some, we don't have to talk about it no more. It is the basis of Reverend Creflo Dollar's $80 million a year ministry. One that sells books, DVDs, and CDs by the millions, all the while teaching the gospel of prosperity. Does God want you to be rich? Mm -hmm. Does he? I believe he does. It's so outright and in your face that you almost think like, did somebody hack into his account and pretty much take his ideology of what he preaches every week and just like kind of post it, you know, just to get a reaction? Was it hacked? It's so bad. When I used to go to the bookstores and I would look for my books, I remember when I came across some of his books and I would see them and, you know, it would blow my mind that they were in the Christian section, right? That they would have them there. And I would literally take those books and just move them over to the business and marketing side because that's where they belong. Everybody was right in. False teacher alert, false teacher alert. And I'm like, he's been a false teacher for how long now? If that's why Jesus died, so that we could have, be rich, then what about all of our brothers and sisters all around the world who are being persecuted for their faith? Basically, no job, barely any way to provide for their family because where they're at, the gospel is illegal, right? No way to make, even make uh, or earn a living, right, because of Christ, but they still choose to follow him. What about our brothers and sisters in the Middle East who are getting their heads cut off for the name of Christ? What does Creflo Dollar do when he gets to the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 8? And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works, and tribulation, and poverty, but thou art rich. So Jesus here tells this church, I know you ain't got nothing. I know that you are in poverty, but yet you are rich. How can he say that if, rich, if riches to Jesus was material blessings? Lay not up your treasure upon the earth where moth and rust doth corrupt. But according to Creflo Dollar, you know, that's exactly what you should do. You should lay up your treasures upon earth. You should actually pursue those things. And you can still pretend to be a Christian at the same time. What he's doing is using Christ to build his empire. He's using Christ for the money that he ultimately wants. Right? I mean, think about it. Um, Jesus came and he bled and died, not for the sins of the world, not that we may know thee, the only true God, but he died and bled on a cross so that you could be rich. Even atheists and unbelievers know how much of a joke that is, and they make a mockery at this type of stuff. This is why these claims are so serious. I would challenge anybody, anybody, I would say, when is the last time you've read your Bible from Genesis to Revelation? How often do you study God's Word? Because if you read your Bible from cover to cover, there's no way you would ever come up with this. There's no way you could come up with that. Christ even says the opposite of it. I mean, look at the warnings in the Bible when he says how hard it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus says that it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle 
And it, you almost have to switch that verse if you're a Creflo Dollar and say, well, you know, remember that jet that I was asking everybody for, you know, $65 million? Well, I don't need a camel. Who needs that? I'll just fly my jet through. If I want to believe God for a $65 million plane, you cannot stop me. You cannot stop me from dreaming. You can't stop me from dreaming. We are believing for 200,000 people to give contributions of 300 U.S. dollars or more to make this a reality. And so I say to you, dream on, baby. Dream on. The Bible says that you cannot serve God and mammon, right? But according to Creflo Dollar, you can do both, right? You can actually pursue the mammon because of God. That makes no sense. And, and Paul even said that there was a time that would come where people would equate godliness with gain. Anybody that follows him and thinks that he has even an ounce of truth in what he says, uh, I would just, my first question would be, I would ask him, what is the gospel? Nine times out of ten, you're going to find out that they don't know the gospel. They're biblically ignorant. Because if God wanted you to be rich, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have never had to die, right? The whole reason why God had to die was because we are sinful and our sin must be paid for. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And how can we be brought back into the presence of a holy God if our sins aren't covered? So Jesus was our righteous substitute. He bore the penalty that we deserve upon the cross, suffered, bled, and died for the sins of the world. And God warns us about the temptations that come through following after money and how basically it will ruin our soul. So why in the world would God tell us to follow and pursue something as a goal that could ultimately lead to the destruction of our soul? It's not biblical. That's not what is taught in the Bible. So the Bible is not God came to make you rich. That's not the gospel. The gospel is that God is the gospel. When is the last time you've read your Bible from Genesis to Revelation? So that you could know God. So that you're not deceived by these type of men. When Solomon first became ruler. He prayed that the Lord would give him wisdom. And God said, because you have asked for this, not only am I going to make you the wisest man ever, but I'm going to give you great riches. That's the difference between the men that we see in the Bible who were wealthy and these false teachers that tell you to pursue these things. The men in the Bible in the old times didn't pursue them. They pursued God. And in return, God blessed them, right? But there were also many times when God didn't bless them. And we see many of the prophets they didn't have empires or kingdoms. The Son of Man had nowhere to lay his head. And then all throughout the New Testament, we see the disciples leaving their businesses. They were fishermen, leaving their families, leaving the things of the world to follow solely Christ. That was it. That was their main goal. When they saw Christ, they dropped everything they had and they followed him. When you read this in the Bible about the false teachers and the wolves in sheep's clothing, people that preach a message that is contrary to what Christ preached, that is not the gospel, and God makes that known to you, you are held accountable if you support that type of person. He's leading us into all truth so that we can spot these type of things and be able to pull our brothers and sisters out of this false teaching. But if they were non-tithers, the bar would lock up the red and blue lights would start going, the siren would go off, and a voice would go throughout the entire dome. Crook, 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 crook. <laughs> Security would go and apprehend them, and once we got them all together, we'd line them up in the front and pass out Uzis by the ushers. We'd point our, uh, our Uzis right at all those non-tithing members because we want God to come to church, and at the count of three Jesuses, we'd shoot them all dead. Now you see why the devil tried so aggressively to discredit my voice.